You know, it's easy for us to say, I would do this or I would do that if I was in a certain situation. I, you know, I think they call that uh, uh, Monday morning quarterback in their hindsight's always 2020. Oh, yeah, if I was faced with that situation, I'd, I'd do this or I'd have not, not done that or what have you. You know, I get right to the point, I'm referring to the tragic shooting in Oregon as well as some of the other recent ones. Let me say this. The root cause of this is nothing that the government can fix. The government cannot fix this. Passing laws, I mean, I, I'm a Second Amendment person. Let me say that right up front. I'm a Second Amendment person. I have a, I've told, I have a concealed carry permit, but I very seldom carry something. But I do have the permit. But the, king, the government can't fix this by passing laws. But the government cannot fix broken people. I do say it's more of a mental health issue. But ultimately, it's demonic in nature. Demonic, satanic, whatever you want to call it. It's anti-Christian. We've talked about this before. These kind of things, these kind of people, it's anti-Christian. You take the instance at the, at the church in, in Charleston. That was the most, here you go, somebody walks into a church. I mean, obviously a black church and a white guy. I'm sure somebody got suspicious. Everybody, your guard should be able to be down in church. Now, a couple of you leaders and actually, if you see somebody... Uh, come in looking suspicious or says things be out of place, take note of it. And I'll take note of it too. So you're sitting there having a Bible study. What do we, oh yeah, come in, brother. Come in, sister. And they have evil intent in the heart. It's satanic, it's demonic, it's anti-Christian. You know, if I was actually in a situation like that, I'm just going to be honest with you. It's difficult for me to say how I would react. I'm not certain how I'd react. If someone had a gun pointed at me and said, are you a Christian? I could get all high and mighty and preach your own and say, oh yeah, brother, I'm a preacher. I'm a Christian. Because I'm a preacher. That don't have anything to do with it. I couldn't do that. I wish I hoped that's what I would do. I hope and pray that I would say yes. And I would stand up for Jesus. But I'm not certain. I'm being honest with you. I think if one thing y'all, I've, I've been told, you know, I, I try to, I, I cannot say 100% then I would say yes. I can say it right now, but if I was facing the situation, I don't know if I would. I like to say I'm 99% sure. You know, I've had a good point in my head one time. When I was 18 years old, and I'll tell you what I was up to, but uh, I was no good. <laughs> sudden got in the car and somebody was in the back seat and put a gun there in my hand up in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Gonna rob us. 18 year old boys did a whole lot of money. We what little bit we had, we done spent it. <laughs> so I've had a gun that well, had nothing to do with my Christianity and I was my activities preceding that was far from Christian. So, you know, I wasn't, I was not in the right place. I know it's not where I should be, not going to show. <laughs> but what if somebody was asking me, are you a Christian? You got a gun for you. I'm 
honest with you. How would I react? Or if you were in that situation, would you stand up for Jesus? Would you tell the truth? Or would you deny even knowing Christ like the familiar story we're going to read from Luke? This must have been a popular story because all the gospel writers talk about it. Luke chapter 22, if you have your Bibles, uh, 54 through 62, you're familiar with this story. And having arrested him, being Christ, they led him away and brought him to the house of the high priest. But Peter was following at a distance. And after they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter was sitting among them. And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the firelight, looking intently at him, and said, This man was with him too. Peter denied it, but he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, another saw him and said, You are one of them too. But Peter said, Man, I'm not. After about an hour had passed, another began, another man began to insist, saying, Certainly this man was also with him, for he's a Galilean. And Peter said, Man, I do not know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was speaking, a rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had told him, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. After Jesus was arrested, he was taken to the high priest's house. Peter was following at a distance. You know, I, I, let's, you know we, Peter is a good character study. He didn't just run off. He still followed at a distance. So let's keep that in mind. Let's give him a little bit of the benefit. I mean, give, give him some benefit of the doubt. And they were sitting around the fire, and a girl said, or accuses Peter of being a father. Denial, deny, deny, deny. Two other men over a period of time do the same thing. And one of them, he says, he's a Galilean. Now, I think that was more the accent. He detected something in his speech. He said, well, he's a Galilean. Because they were, that was southern Israel. You know, Galilee is northern. Uh, more northern part of Palestine, Israel. He denied both of those accusations. After that third denial, the rooster crowed. And what's interesting in this, I read all the accounts, but Luke is the only one that tells you that Jesus looked at Peter. If you read it real closely, and man, that had to be painful from Peter's perspective. You read the other, you, you, you get the picture that he's separated. Christ has done gone, and Peter and there in two separate areas. But Jesus had to have heard those denials. I'm, I'm thinking that the way Luke, the way Luke writes this. They said, and Jesus looked at him. And I, my way I see is when them I told you so looks. You know, those we don't like. To be reminded, I told you so. You know. Uh, then Peter remembered, and he left cr crying like a baby, bawling, squalling, whatever we want to call it down south. He was just boo hooing. He realized what he's done. You know, you you would have thought thought that Peter would have stood up for Christ. And not denied knowing him. Because remember, this is the same Peter said, Who do the people say that I am? Well, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. No. 
And also, you would thought that Peter was with Jesus. He was the inner circle. And he heard most all of the teaching, if not all of it, that we read about in the, in the Gospels. Especially these painful words that we're going to read next out of Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. And I, yeah, I look back as I said, was Peter there? Yes. Go look in verse 10, a little early in chapter 10. The 12 apostles are instructed. Peter was there. He did not miss this teaching. And Jesus says a whole lot here. Verse 32 says, Everyone, therefore, who shall confess me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever shall deny me before men, I will also deny him before my Father who is in heaven. I don't like hearing that. I don't. Obviously, Peter forgot it. Or he might have remembered it. And out of fear, we don't know. You know, it really doesn't take, doesn't need much explanation. You don't have to know Greek and all that kind of stuff to figure out what he's saying here. It also seems a little harsh. In American Christianity, and God's been, I think there's going to be some messages down the road a little bit. I've got to sort of work through them. And you've heard me say it before, and I'm, the, I'm, I'm right there with you. We have comfortable Christianity. And then you hear these, hear this terminology, suffering for Christ. Or don't you deny me, I'll deny you before the Father. Mm -hmm. We don't like to hear that in our comfortable Christian, American Christian world. I don't like to hear it. If you publicly acknowledge me that you're one of my followers, I will tell the Father in heaven that you are. Now, God already knows it, but, I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a point, an illustration that Jesus is using. You know, if you confess me publicly, or you, you do not deny me, but first, if you confess and acknowledge publicly that I'm one of your followers, God in heaven's going to know that. But on the other hand, if you deny me publicly, I will tell God that you're not part of his family. That's the way I phrase that. You know, we talked about that the last few weeks, the family of God and all that stuff, brothers and sisters. You know, this is a heavy subject whole scenario that inspired me to say this, brought this message on, I, I felt, I kept trying to go away from it. I kept trying to go away from the message. And I, I mean, I tried hard to do something else. You know what God said? He said, do you do that next week? Are you doing that the following week? <laughs> okay. Okay, Lord. <laughs> you know, I hear you. It's a heavy subject. The incident Itself that we've been talking about, the world we live in, as well as our biblical responsibility. You know, we must ask ourselves what we would do in that situation, whether it be Peter or the students. Now, Peter would have probably would have been arrested and maybe put on trial if he'd said yes. And possibly he could have been executed. He might have been right up there on good cheese. I don't know that. But, you know, Roman justice was swift and severe. Would I stand up for Jesus? I think so. As I started on this message and I progressed through it, I felt some way my, I said, you know, 
I, don't, I can't say definitely yes. Is that okay for me to say that? Are y'all there with me on that? Am I okay? I mean, are, are y'all saying, oh, go yeah, you up? I'll tell you, yes, definitely is. What's wrong with you, preacher? Well, yeah. <laughs> you know. Am I okay? I mean, is that, is that give me an amen? Amen. 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 amen? Okay. Amen. Then the cop called right back at you. Would you stand up for Jesus? I can only hope so. Now, let's go back to that situation on college campus or wherever you might be. If I have freedom of movement, if I have, if I have freedom of movement, I will be standing up for Jesus by being a moving target. If I have freedom of movement, you know, Ben Carson, I think, is the one that's got a whole lot of flack for that. That's what he was trying to say. And I thought about that. You know, so you, we all put ourselves in those situations. Yes, I stand up for Jesus and I'm not moving and you can kill me. I think I'll say, are you a Christian? Yes, I am. <laughs> And I'm moving, not running away from the situation. Not running away from the situation. Either moving toward it or flanking it. Now that's my thinking. You know, I see this all the time. You know, you're watching the movies where, where there's a, I know this is cinematic, where there's, a, you know, somebody's, some person, somebody's on foot, and they're running, and a car's chasing them, and they're shooting at them with fully automatic weapons. And I'm saying, why don't you cut left or cut right or dive down somewhere? Don't just keep running. You ain't going to outrun a car. And I know you're not going to outrun a bullet. But I do know this. It's harder to hit a moving target. I've done enough shooting in my life. I've done enough with rifles and pistols. It is hard to hit a moving target. sound crazy, but that's my thing. Yes, I'm a Christian. I'm standing up for Jesus. And after I said that, I'm either going to go low and try to tackle them or go around or something like that. You know, with all them people, and, and again, I don't, you're, you're, you're in shock. You're in total shock. What if one somebody went left, one somebody went right, or vice versa, and somebody went, you know, I don't think the casualty rate would have been as high. And I'm not criticizing those people. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Again, it's easy to say what you would do in a situation like that when you're not playing. That's what I think I might do. You know, there are times that we must take a stand for what we believe in. There are times that we must do that, folks. Yes. And Jesus is one of those reasons. Yes. He is one of those reasons. Yes. He stood up for us yes. at the high priest's high priest house, at the in front of the Roman governor. He stood up for us, and like Hope said Wednesday night. By the way, we had a, those of y'all that were not able to make it. Great, about 41 people at our great sunset communion service. And Hope made a point and said, You know, look at that cross there. Touch that cross. And I went over and he looked at it. And I think that's, that's a lot of weight to carry. But Jesus stood up for us to the point of falling down trying to carry that cross. Psalm 94 16 says, who will stand up for me against evildoers? Who? Who will stand up for me against evildoers? Who will take his stand for me against those who do wickedness? Who will do it? Will Blaine Spence do it? I hope I will. I pray that I will. Lord, give me the 
strength to do it. First, let me say, Lord, I pray to you right now that I'm never faced with that situation. And I pray that no one here would be faced with that situation. And I think those people in those, at that church and in that school and other places would say the same thing. But if I am, give me the where to, to all the... Gosh, I can't think of the word. But give me the, give me the wisdom to do the right thing. Give me the stand up for Jesus. Who will stand up for him? Who will take his stand against those that do wickedness? Folks, we live in a messed up world. And it's not getting better. It's not going to get better until Jesus comes back. I wish I could just, I said this before, I, said, I wish I could just say, oh yeah! It, it, it's, it's a hunky dory. We're, it's not that way. Katie, 17 years old, that's a whole lot before you became a Christian in about a year. I gosh, I wish I had a Christian that we live in this country. And you already know it. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it things can be tough at times. But, you know, God is in control. God is in control. And if I know that God's in control, 